Hurricane Aaron has been upgraded to that major hurricane status just north of the Leeward Islands as it moves into these very warm sea surface temperatures, reduced shear, and it's escaping that dry air with the Saharan dust further off towards the east. And if we take a look at satellite and radar here, get a good idea what we're talking about. And there already is those tropical storm warnings in place for the Leeward Islands over towards the British and Virgin Islands. I know that they also have those warnings up as well. So this is not a fish storm. This is not completely, you know, missing land masses here definitely seeing some uh, impacts with that heavy rainfall and those tropical storm strength gusts but it's really all about the core of the storm that's where you do have those cat three conditions and you can see the eye over the course of the last six hours just clears right out you have that convection tightening up and look at the striations going away from the center just kind of indicating this organization and also that outflow aloft allowing for this to have lungs to breathe my point is we have multiple factors coming together that it's allowing this to kind of continue to intensify and become up to this major hurricane status. Now, there's a look at your hurricane hunters. They've been flying through this continuously over the past, uh, well, about 48 hours now, giving us uh, the latest readings on the storm. And also, not just the current, you know, what we're seeing right now, but this gets ingested directly into the models so we can get a better and more accurate look at where this is headed next. Now, take a look at this. This is uh, sea surface temperatures overlaid on our track, and as this is at cat three it's still expected to intensify to e4 because it's moving into even more favorable areas for um strengthening with those sea surface temperatures 85 to 90 degrees potentially i did mention this is getting away from that saharan dust which is back there towards the east and it's going to burst through and kind of get into an even better area for intensification but the confidence still continues as this is going to stay east of the turks and caicos in the bahamas and well towards the east of of the east coast of the United States. And the reasoning is still with this basically subtropical ridge. And actually, the stronger it gets, uh, the better news for the east coast of the United States. And let me explain, because a weaker storm would basically not win out with these high pressures. They would beat this out, and it would probably get pushed further towards the west. But since it's got up to this major status, it's just more confidence that it's going to be able to kind of punch through that wall in the subtropical ridge and allow it to kind of kick off here towards the north now. We have seen though despite that a slight westward trend in the tracks from the national hurricane center there but the northerly progression is continuing and overall the trending does continue to show that plus our model consensus showing the ensembles right here not a one of them has this coming on shore and this is just basically each one of the euro and the gfs it runs 31 times and then you get the operational model which is the average of all of that um even the outliers just showing this to offshore. So I want to stress again because I have so many people saying, oh, you're hyping this and you're saying it's going to hit land. We are not. And it's since the beginning, uh, when it was coming on wave off of Africa, most Mets, including myself, are already saying it's going to stay offshore. So you got to make sure you're aware of where you're getting your latest information from. Now, with that said, maybe people are confused because there will be some impacts, especially up and down the East Coast, including here into Jacksonville on the First Coast. A high risk of rip currents are in, uh, going to be in place Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Dangerous rip currents. Plus, we've got an increase in the spring tide. Right now, we're at a half moon. We're starting to wane into a new moon. So that combined with the onshore wind, especially on Tuesday over towards Towards Wednesday, we could be seeing some minor tidal flooding and some minor beach erosion. Not looking at, you know, dunes being washed away, but definitely water levels at high tides are going to be pushed up there with some passing showers possible. But the big issue for the East Coast is going to be that wave action as this kicks on by. So, yeah, you know, we got that weather impact alert for uh, the First Coast because of those uh, onshore winds and dangerous rim currents. But like I said, I just want to stress this is not going to be making that landfall and coming on shore. I can't stress that enough, guys. But once again, it is not a fish storm in the sense that some people are being impacted by this, especially in the Leeward Islands, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, even Puerto Rico, um, the Yankee Delta issued for uh, the Coast Guard out there, just making sure everybody's tied down and, uh, you know, boats aren't heading out to sea out there just to be safe. So that's the latest on Aaron here on our Saturday morning. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Check out firstcoastnews.com slash Hurricane Central for more information.